The Build Show is on the road today, coming to you from Westerly, Rhode Island, where we're actually visiting the job site of this old house. This is a coming season, and I'm here with the builder, Jeff Sweener. Man, how are Jeff, you? good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Jeff, you're the owner of Sweener Builders, yep. and I got to see you and your crew in action on the job site today. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a total fanboy of this old house. <laughs> so after watching the show for 20 years and being on your job, yeah. it was really, really fun. But on today's episode, Jeff and I are going to have a conversation about engineered lumber, pros and cons, why you might choose traditional lumber, and what are some of the big reasons why you might choose engineered, and also what are the, some of the downsides. So first, Jeff, this is a perfect part of the house to talk yeah. about traditional lumber. This house is how old? Uh, built in the late 40s. Okay, so this is quite an old house, post-World War II. Yep. A lot of traditional lumber in this house. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I'm seeing some concrete stains yeah. on some yeah. of these stones. What am I seeing there? Yeah, you're seeing what, what used to be the concrete form. So they, bit, they built the forms in place, poured the concrete, stripped that off, and used it uh, for wall sheeting. I love it. Those yeah. thrifty Yankees didn't That's want to right. throw anything away, That's did right. they? So we've got horizontal lap sheathing. That's doing the shear value. This one here looks like it was a concrete form board, yep. and this one's this one's not. Yep. This got a little concrete in it. So these studs, how old do you think the lumber is on these studs? I mean, we're probably talking hundred-year-old lumber. You wow. know, today's lumber is probably twenty years, so yeah. you know, really old growth, and you can see yep. it in the in the you know the growth rings here are so oh, tight. This, here you go. This is a perfect example. This is a rip down. It looks like is this a, a stud that you guys made, Jeff? So we took apart the roof on the other side in order to go up a, a row, and, okay. and we uncovered beautiful two by eight lumber. All right. I mean, it's Douglas fir. It's straight. Wow. It's it, it was too good to, to throw in the yeah. dumpster. So probably we, old growth Doug fir, oh, and yeah. that's what you're seeing here for these ceiling rafters, right? Ceiling joists and the rafters on the roof, right? right? So we we salvaged it all. It was all hand nailed, so it came out really really well, and and then we ripped them into two bys. Yeah. So we have a whole bunch of reframing going on oh, cool. here. Cool. And this and one right there is that. Right there. That's and pretty awesome. It, it, it I mean, you run through the table saw and it straight as an arrow. That's some tight rings. Now over yeah. here, Jeff, I saw earlier, it looks like you've got some new framing in the house as you walk into this part of the house that is SPF studs, right? And yeah, so this is this is a little, this is just a temporary wall that's uh, separating these, these two spots. But you know, this is traditionally what we would use if we weren't using engineered, it's, uh, it's kiln dried spruce. Yeah. yeah. Um, Same with us in Texas. We use SPF all the time, sure, and sure. it's good lumber. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. Um, you got to make sure you you straighten your walls right, and make sure right. everything's nice and straight. Right. We typically run a level across there. Yeah. We'll fix a couple bows yeah. here and there. Yeah. Structurally sound, no problems with that. Very light. Stand, very light. Wall stands very well. So. That's right. Yeah. But then boom, as you go into the other house, this this kind of new section of the house on the old foundation. I'm seeing here that you're framing everything with right. engineer. There's right. no traditional lumber in here. Yeah, we got we got parallel uh, columns. Yeah, and a big old beam. beam. So that beam came to us one piece, uh -huh. 40 feet long. We used the uh, you know the the genie lifts, yeah, and lift. we we got both sides all the way up. Got the walls underneath it, and uh, yeah, all our all our headers are all one piece. Uh, Parallams or okay. PSLs. Yep. Um, and out in the gable where there's not as much load, you just have an LSL right. header. Right. And then all your studs, like this example wall here, every stud is two by six LSL, right? Right. So here's a, here's an SPF uh, piece right there. Yep. And there's that LSL, and you can you can see right here. This is the number one reason to, oh, to yeah. use them. You sight Straight down that LSL. There is no culling. Yep. Every stud on that stack right there is ready to go, right? Right. right. You're yeah. not worried about the new guy not crowning correctly. Right. Exactly. And and you know we we probably a pile like that a KDS we probably call through probably 15 percent of it would go in the right? return pile. 15 percent. That's probably, pretty. That's a yeah. decent uh, call right there. Yeah. And with these, what percent? Zero. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically like a metal stud in some oh, respects. Oh yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I've, I've gotten that question before, Jeff. Why not frame with metal studs? You ever get that question? Yeah, it's, a, it's such a different animal, you know? It's just, it's just outside of our tradition. 
You know, just it's just hard to fathom, you it's, know, using metal studs. It's I mean, not the same tools. Typically right. metal studs in commercial buildings are not structural. Right. You've right. got a concrete structure that's taking care of all the load. Yeah. And those studs are just infill. They're right, just right. holding drywall. Yeah. Exactly. But in this house, all these studs are structural. Yeah. Yeah. So then talk to me about cost. What are you finding in, in your part of the country on cost for these? Uh it's it's about double. Yeah. It's about double. And yeah. you know, a lot of times in our houses we'll use you know, we might just use this in a uh, in a wall that's uh, it's got kitchen cabinets yep. uh, or uh, shower walls yeah. where they're going to be tiled. Where you want, you know, you want straight, you want true, you want flat. Yeah. Um, but in this case, you know, the one thing about going 100% engineered is that any movement is it, it's all the same. Yeah. You know, all the properties are all the same throughout the entire frame. Yeah, that's right. You know, so, another place that I've used them too is tall wall applications oh, yeah. where you've got those two-story family rooms, yep. two-story foyers, balloon you might use frame. them. Yeah, balloon framing, because yep. you're, you're having a really hard time finding a 20-foot oh, two by six impossible. that's perfectly dead straight. Right, it calls right. way more than 15% on yeah. those. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned kitchens, you know, another big deal in kitchens, not just the cabinets, but anytime you've got countertops, something flat coming right, against the wall, right, right. that's when you really want that perfectly exactly. dead flat wall. Exactly. Um, yeah. Another big thing for me, Jeff, in Texas where I build, I build a lot of contemporary style houses. Yep. So I have a lot of raking lights sometimes from high windows, and we want that architects we work with on that real smooth right. level five drywall. Right. So going to those engineered studs means that wall is just dead Perfectly flat. Perfectly flat, yeah. yeah. Good point. All right, so we've talked a lot about why we like LSLs. Yeah. Yeah. What are the downsides in your mind on engineered lumber <coughs> for framing? Well, number one, cost. You yeah. know, so we're we're twice as much. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot. You know, it's it's a small percentage of the overall cost of the sure. house, but it's something. It's still dollars, though. It's still dollars. Um, the weight, they're very heavy. Yes. So, um, you know, not an awful thing, mm -hmm. except you know, you have to you have to factor that in when you're standing walls. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes more manpower, right? Yeah. Another carpenter yeah. or two on the job. You saw maybe. us up there with those rake walls. I mean, we had we had eight to ten guys on that, and it was still heavy. Yeah, that's a heavy wall for sure when you've got that kind of weight on there. Right. Talk to me about nailing them. Any issues with nailing into uh, engineered lumber? Yeah, when you're nailing through the face, you're nailing two pieces together, jack to a stud. You really need a high pressure gun, high pressure compressor to get that nail to sink all the way through. It's very, very dense. Yeah, and oftentimes you're actually bouncing that off. The nail's sticking up a little bit. The carpenter's pulling it, it out yeah. and he's finishing it off. Right. right. All right, so here's, let's get geeky for a second. There's another issue that Jeff and I were talking about earlier that you have to be aware of when you're using engineered lumber. And it's a nerdy word that I love to throw out occasionally, hygric buffer capacity. It basically means that lumber is a sponge, right? That tree was getting the water from the roots and it was sending that water all the way up to the top of the tree. Yeah. It's porous, but engineered lumber is not very porous. It's right. not gonna be able to soak up water. Good and bad in some respects, right? This, this LSL could get a little wet during construction. It's not gonna bow or warp on us like another type of stud would. Right. However, don't frame any exterior walls, exterior porches, screen porches, decks with any of the engineered lumber because if this were to sit in water and couldn't dry, remember my friend David Nicastro says, if it can't dry, it's going to die. That's definitely true when it comes to LSLs. If, if they get wet and they can't dry over time, they're going to rot much faster than a traditional stud would. Am I missing anything, Jeff? No, no, I think you covered it. Um, you know, those are really the negatives that, you know, the positives, the negatives, you know, it's a it's a trade-off, but a trade -off. it's uh, the one thing it does give you is a nice product. It oh, gives man. you a nice finished product, flat, straight, true. So. As you as you pan this house, man, this is some pretty framing, Jeff. And yeah. I was telling someone earlier, you you framed your gambrel roof rafters out of all engineered lumber as yeah. well. Yeah. And a lot of times when I see new construction with gambrel roofs, now we don't do those a whole lot, but right. you see them out of two by four trusses, they're like floppy spaghetti up yeah. there. Yeah. And man, yeah. yours are tight, yeah. straight. That's a great way to frame yeah. this. Impressive yeah. job, man. Thank you. Thank um, you. If you're interested in learning more about Jeff, Instagram's a great spot. He's got a great Instagram feed. We'll put a link to that below. If you're in Narragansett and you're interested in, uh, in a great builder, did I say that right, Narragansett? Yeah. Uh, we'll put a link to Jeff's website below. Yep. 
Otherwise, consider engineered lumber for those critical areas or maybe even for a whole house. It's an impressive product. You just got to know those downsides right. going in. Jeff, right. I really appreciate right, you Matt. sharing your wisdom with us, All brother. Right. Thanks for coming. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber to The Build Show, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.